Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here in slightly chilly um, Hartford, Connecticut, and being able to meet with the governor, the governor's health staff, um, University of Connecticut staff and faculty and students, and really have a dialogue to really learn what's working at University of Connecticut. Um, University of Connecticut has one of the highest percent of in-person classes, and we were very interested in how they have been able to do this safely, because we see from the data on the dashboard that I'm sure you're all following carefully, that they've been able to reopen safely and provide in-room and in-classroom instruction, as well as online instruction. And what was very interesting and what we've seen across the 21 universities we have been to is really success has come from partnership and planning. And I think it was really described well for me by one of the members of the university staff that said, reporting lines don't matter anymore. Meaning that they moved past the stovepipe way that they normally do business into a more horizontal way of doing business to really bring together innovative thinkers, which often are research institutions like University of Connecticut, to find solutions that work for staff, fa staff, faculty, and students. And I think I was very, very encouraged to see what they have done for surveillance, because we know in many university settings, a lot of the spread is asymptomatic. And so their work on wastewater research, and it was really great to meet the wastewater researcher and to really understand how they've been utilizing that work to really understand what dorms, and dorms are communal living, we just have to understand that, and really understanding how they use wastewater to then drive surveillance testing at specific dorms. To really understand, to get a real target on where the virus is, how it's spreading, and protecting the students and the staff and the community. We talked about really expanding testing into the community because what the university sees with spread, and again, they made it very clear that spread is not happening in the classroom and they're not seeing cases between students and faculty and students in the community. Where spread occurs is when we come together as individuals, often indoors, sometimes outdoors, but without our mask and no longer physically distanced. So we talked about how to remain socially engaged but physically distanced to really provide students that opportunity to interact with each other and to hear from the students how much they value their in-classroom in learning. And to see that the labs, the president of the university was showing me how they are doing chemistry labs and biology labs and really providing that kind of experiential learning that is very critical for many of these scientific careers. So I think they're doing an extraordinarily good job with Sentinel surveillance with this wastewater. We would like them to take that statewide um, to really be able to tell communities whether they're spread in their community or not. And I think this becomes critically important because as what we're hearing from what's occurring with student spread is exactly what we're hearing across the country. This is our, I think, 32nd state that we've been in in the last three and a half months. These travels have been critically important because we get to meet with community members as well as leaders. And what we're seeing in the community is much more spread occurring in households and in social occasions. Small gatherings where people have come inside, taken off their masks to eat or drink or socialize with one another, believing that the friend down the street or the friend from out of town or that family member who came in certainly could not have COVID because they look fine. This is really a message to everyone in Connecticut. The kind of spread that we're seeing now is very different from the spread we experienced in March and April. And so it will require a much closer relationship with community behaviors and communities understanding whether there's virus in their communities or not and what events are actually spreading this virus and really talking with the students and the faculty about how do we work together in a new way to really alert communities through either much better and much broader um, asymptomatic surveillance testing in communities or wastewater testing, and then that following up with that with a health action. And I think that's what we heard from the University of Connecticut and the health leadership, that wastewater testing is only helpful if it's followed by a health action 
to the community. And I think what we've heard from the university is bringing all of those pieces together. And I think what the university has shown and what we've seen in every university is physical distancing and mask work even indoors. And we see that in the fact that we have not seen large spreading events in the classrooms in these universities. And I think that tells us that if we take those same practices into our everyday life, both in public and in private, and we maintain physical distancing and we maintain mask usage, that we can continue in the Northeast to control the virus. We came to the Northeast because we did see troubling signs. We do see slight upticks in test positivity, slight upticks in tests and cases. And that often then is just the earliest indicator that there's ongoing asymptomatic spread in the communities. So to all the people of Connecticut out there, really, if you're gathering together indoors, assume someone in that group that's outside of your family household that could be positive and wear your mask and continue to physically distant. And we can figure out together how to be physically distanced but socially engaged with one another. Um, we've traveled this United States and it's been a great privilege and we've talked to people all over the United States. And we've been able to maintain, despite being in very, what we consider the hottest zones for COVID spread, we have been in the public and we have been with others, but we do maintain physical distance and we do utilize our mask when we are with others. Um, and we wear them almost 24 seven while we're traveling. Um, so really want to thank you and thank the people of Connecticut and just finally to acknowledge what Connecticut and the Northeast experienced in March and April and frankly into May was a huge issue for everybody across the country. We learned from you, we learned how to better care for patients and that, that information translated around the United States to improve care across the South. And so our case fatality rates are about one quarter of what they were in March and April because of the lessons we learned. At the same time, we need to learn the lessons of the outbreak from the South and bring that learning into the Northeast and really understand that the spread of the virus now is not occurring so much in the workplace as people have taken precautions. It's happening in homes and social occasions and people gathering and taking their mask off and letting down their guard and not physically distancing. So I'd be happy to take questions. I think that's very much why we are in the Northeast now. Um, when we saw the troubling signs across the South um, and was alerting governors and communities, many people were still focused on people not coming to the emergency room or not yet coming to the hospital. And yet we could see spread occurring into the communities. And it's really to tell you by the time you see people coming to the emergency room with symptomatic disease, there is widespread potential of community asymptomatic and silent spread. And really working with governors in the Northeast to increase their testing among asymptomatic individuals. Because we're all not perfect. So if we've made a mistake and we've gone to a party and we've taken off our mask, and by party, I mean it could be six people in someone's house. It could be a dinner party. If I've done that, then five to seven days later, I need to go get tested. Because I can't tell whether someone there was infected or not. So the 40,000 cases right now are a combination of improvement in the South, but a deterioration in the heartland and in the upper Midwest. Um, again, from community spread. If you go to the Utah websites, you'll see that 80% of their spread from excellent contact tracing is happening in households and in social gatherings less than 5% in the workplace. And so this is the message we really want to carry, that as a community, we need to be responsible to being on guard, whether we're in public or private. Somehow we think that if we're in a mall, that's a public place and we're gonna social distance and wear a mask. But we have to take that same kind of precaution if we're with others that are outside of our household. And that's the message we wanna convey. 
because the 40,000 cases today are being driven by improvements across the South where their cases are going down, but increasing cases in the heartland and the upper Midwest as it starts to get colder and people move indoors. And that's what happened in the South. It got hot and people moved indoors for air conditioning and there was spreading events throughout the communities. We see all very early upticks in test positivity and uptick in cases. And I, we just wanted to carry that message that this is what we saw early on in the South. And this is the moment to really increase asymptomatic testing, increase outreach to the communities, making sure that every community member knows that if they're with individuals outside of their household, it could be a COVID spreading event. And if they participated in one of those, they need to get tested within five to seven days. And that we really need to figure out how to be engaged with one another socially, but physically distanced. Because I think that it's gonna be a critical message through the fall. It will protect us against flu and it will protect us against COVID if we keep up those behaviors. Please also remember to get your flu shot. I think we can all help the healthcare community by keeping the flu levels down. We know that flu is very, very concerning illness for young children, pregnant women, and certainly our elderly. So that is a reason for all of us to get that flu shot. The great thing through this whole time period is we have been able to give our best public health and scientific advice to leadership, and we continue to do that. And I continue to do that every day, whether it's the governor, whether it's the president, or whether it's members of the community. I think that message and the consistency of that message is absolutely key. And I came to the Northeast to really make it clear that we have the ability within ourselves to really prevent others from getting infected and preventing us from getting infected. But it does require attention to that detail. Staying physically distanced, wearing a mask, and ensuring that we do our personal hygiene. And that is at home, and that is in public. And I think that's pretty clear. And I try to say, I just say that I give the same advice to every individual. I've been in government for 40 years. We provide the same advice, no matter if you're the president or the vice president or the chief of staff or a member of the task force. I think we have unity in the, the advice to the American people is the same advice that I give to the president and the vice president, is we have a way to control this virus and we know what it is. Physical distance, wearing a mask, personal hygiene, and also critically ensuring that we carry those activities both in public and in private if we're with individuals that are not part of our normal everyday family or household pot. Well, I'm not at the White House currently. I have not been at the White House while this has all been occurring because I have been traveling the majority of the time. I've really been on the road since the end of June. And my message, and the White House knows what my message is, and they are promoting me to be out here with you all to tell you this message, that mass, there's an evidence base about masks, and I could go through all of it, but let me be very clear to the people of Connecticut. What have we learned about masks? Well, we've learned the physics of it, and we can see it block droplets. So we know how effective these are in blocking our droplets. But we also have real life experience. If you look at the data in the MMWR recently published by the CDC, and the CDC continues to put out critical science for the American people and healthcare providers and public health individuals. 
and they worked with the um, public health individual that led um, Dr. C um, Chris Christie at, um, in Arizona and wrote up a really important piece. And they wrote up mitigation efforts in Arizona, again in Phoenix, and the impact that it had on stopping community spread. And fundamental, within two weeks of the mass mandate, they started to see a plateau in cases that then came down. Of course, that was also, they restricted somewhat indoor dining and, and bar activity. But the first thing they did was the mass mandate. If you go to um, Baton Rouge, I got to meet with them and their wastewater people who, like um, the university, have done an excellent wor work at LSU about detecting wastewater, but they expended that into Baton Rouge. And within two weeks of a mass mandate in Baton Rouge, the wastewater viral load decreased. So now we have physics and clear physical evidence that they work, but we also have clear public health evidence that it works at the level of the community. And that's really what it's really important, is the evidence is not theoretic. It's not just scientific. It's showing that you can implement, and it makes a difference when the, all of the community wears a mask and physically distance. That would always be my advice to every individual in this country. First, if you know you're infected, you wear a mask. But secondly, we wear a mask to protect others when we don't know if we're infected. And so because of the asymptomatic nature of this virus, I will tell you again, you cannot assume that anybody that you are with does not have this virus. Um, you need to wear a mask because you don't know for sure that you don't have the virus. And that's our, that's our obligation to one another in a public health way. I take all infectious diseases very seriously. I've had the privilege to work on HIV, TB, and malaria around the globe. Infectious diseases are, by their nature, infectious. And that means that others can become infected from me or from you or from others. And I have a deep respect for this particular virus because of its level of asymptomatic contagion. And I think early on, because we very much were focused on who was coming to the hospital and who was sick, I think early on people thought the degree of asymptomatic spread was much less. And what I can tell you is the degree of this asymptomatic spread is much greater, much greater than the 17% we thought early on. CDC now says it's 40%, but that may have an age component. If you look at the data from Clemson and go to their website, and I really want to thank the universities because they've really stepped up to really be researchers for the public. Um, and that's what you want your great universities to do. And if you go to the Clemson website, you'll see that they've been tracking both test positivity in their symptomatic cases, but also their asymptomatic cases to actually find those asymptomatic cases. In the case of universities, it may be seven to one, asymptomatic to symptomatic. And that's why I have a deep respect for this virus. And that's why I'm saying you cannot tell if someone is infected. It's great that we have testing out there, but we have to have testing in a way that finds both the asymptomatics as well as the symptomatics. And we really spent the last bit of time talking about how to use testing of nursing home staff, how to use tes testing of teachers, how to use testing of first responders, how to use testing of potentially commuter students, mostly because we want them as a reflection of what's happening in their community that they come from, to really understand and be able to give very laser-focused alerts to communities about whether virus is spreading in their community or not. And I think that's what's really important for the fall. That's what we would like to see all the states working towards. It's why we've given the Binex tests to the governors so they can utilize it in that way to really help us have eyes, we call it eyes on the virus, to really have eyes on where the virus is and how it's spreading, because you cannot rely on symptoms alone. I've been on the road 
So I have not been in, in conversations specifically with any of the leadership while I'm on the road. Um, and I would certainly not engage with leaders when they are battling an illness at, at this time. That's, um, he has a whole team responsible for his illness and I'm not part of that team. I think what I think the White House has wanted me to do and has had me doing since June is carrying the message of how we protect one another and how we can stop the spread of this virus. And I was particularly nervous about the Northeast because I want to make it very clear what we did in the spring is not going to work in the fall. And so this sense that the spread is out there in workplaces and in, in institutions is not going to be adequate. The spread is within our communities and it's within the things that we do with one another without a mask on. And I think going into, you can see it from the high holy days, you can see it from the risk that could come from Thanksgiving, is we have to give citizens of this country clear understanding of how to protect one another and their family members and their loved ones to stay socially engaged but physically distant during this time of social interactions. You know, it's early here, and that's why we we try to come to states early on. Now we were in the upper, we were in the heartland about six weeks ago. We were in the upper Midwest about three or four weeks ago because really carrying this message that there is silent spread in the community before you start to see emergency room visits or hospitalizations is really key, and that's the message we were carrying. I think that the Northeast has been well prepared throughout this and the governors and mayors and the communities have been great in following guidance and it's kept your rates down. But part of the other thing that has kept your rates down is people being out and about either on vacation or having most of their activities outdoors. You can feel this weather. You know what's going to happen. The heat is going to go on. The humidity will decrease in the household. When humidity decreases, those droplets that we all can tell now are inside of our mask. I know that when you're out here, you can start to feel the moisture build up inside your mask. You can really tell now that it's getting winter or war cooler that there's actual moisture inside your mask. That normally is out here. And what we're trying to convey is when you go into a lower humidity, those droplets with the virus may, may evaporate some of the water and that may allow them to stay suspended longer. And so indoor activities and with the heat on is particularly conducive to spreading events without your mask. So keeping your fan on, take it off of auto and put it on constant. Crack your windows as you can. Um, I said that in North Dakota, I can tell you that did not go over well um, because I guess in North Dakota it gets so cold you cannot crack your windows, but in this area you could. So anything that increases air exchange, that increases the, the fan, that increases the filtration, all good, but you can overcome all of those helpful things if you take your mask off and you're close to others inside. And so that's what I really wanted to convey across the Northeast that we have to be careful inside, as careful as we are outside. So thank you very much, really appreciate your time. And I again wanna thank the president of the university and his staff and the governor. Um, every time we go out, we learn something. And we learned a lot from this team here. Um, they are one of the highest number of in-person classes. Um, and I think if you go to their dashboard, they still have very low number of cases and they have a good way to find them between the wastewater and the surveillance. And so we really want other universities to learn from the universities that open safely and are staying open and providing a safe environment for learning for their students, faculty, and staff. So thank you.